we'd like to make our cuts before Lake Placid and use that as a training run for the Olympics. I know I have to deliver a message that is going to crush a dream, a lifelong dream. If it's a veteran, an older player, it's game over. And it's, it's going to be incredibly devastating and very hard to deliver that message. I guarantee you she'll be in tears, I'll be in tears. And I'm not embarrassed about that at all. I just hope we're all going to be there because I just feel like uh, we've been a lot and it would be just great to be all of them, to be there and enjoy it, you know, as much as I can because uh, we've been there, I guess, the first one and uh, I just hope it's gonna, the dream is gonna come true for all of us because we've been working really, really hard because uh, it's gonna be uh, an experience that uh, we're never gonna forget. I think that it would be pretty devastating if I uh, didn't make it. So that's it. You got to live with it, and life goes on, you know. I can't uh, dwell on something like that. I'm just going to do everything in my power to make sure that that doesn't happen. Team Canada has been on the road for two months, busing to small towns to promote the women's game, jetting to the hockey capitals of Europe and North America to play their rivals and hone their skills. Now one stop remains before the last of the cuts, a final chance for the players to prove themselves. Winnipeg, yet another exhibition game with the looming threat of Team USA. Canada has, has dominated hockey in the past and it's They've actually had a longer history of women's hockey than the U.S., so it's not like um, we're the mighty country as far as hockey goes. You know, hockey was, was kind of a Canadian game at first. Now the U.S. has taken that over. I don't think they're a better team than us. I think talent-wise, we're fairly equal. And, um, you know, it's two very competitive teams when you get on the ice. I think if you look back at that World Championship game in Kitchener, I think they had a few lucky bounces. Starting at center, number 61, Vicky Sonahara. And starting on the left wing, Winnipeg Zone, number 7, Jennifer For the first two periods, Team Canada seems unbeatable. Then stress and fatigue take their toll. The Americans fight back to be just one goal down at the final buzzer. What's it like to be standing here wearing this jersey and playing with these guys? I mean, you started. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it was kind of fun. I mean, every time you put the jersey on, you're like, how are you feeling? People talk about the gap. Closing with the gap was always very tight. Yeah. The announcement of the final Olympic roster is only a few hours away. Manon Réom has already made it. She has won her place back in goal. Tomorrow, her teammates will be told if they too will be Olympians. One by one, the players are called in to learn their fate. Congratulations, welcome to the Olympic team. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. Good job. Thanks. I just had the worst feeling of my life. Downstairs in the dressing room, standing there, and you're like all alone. It's like, whew. It's scary, eh? Yeah. Cassie, uh, we're also naming you as an assistant captain to the 98 Olympic team, so 
That's cool. Way to go, girl. That's a great honor. Thanks. Thanks. We're proud of you. Doing a great job. Thanks. I'm going to help you both, too. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Tears of joy. But for Luce Latendre, tears of sorrow. Players that were released this morning, Angela James, Luce Latond, Tammy Shuchuk, and Rebecca Fahey. Those people have been here, <coughs> and they will be. They'll be with us when we go. They're an important part of this team. I'm really, really, really proud to be a member of the Olympic team. But really sad when I, I'm thinking about, you know, especially, you know, AG. I've been, I know her for so long, and <laughs> she, I don't know. But anyway, I know we have to be positive. I'm, I am positive, but it's just like, didn't really give me reasons. I just sat and she told me I'm a tremendous person and the team will miss me. And I said, best of luck, you guys. And I know you'll do it. You'll, you'll be able to do it. I just can believe all to be w without me, but just the best of luck, and in the last two years, I, it was the greatest experience in my whole life. And I don't regret anything. But today, it's the hardest day in my life. The games were, were my dream. I'm not there, but I'll not quit. I'll keep going, and I'll be back for sure one day. Luce Latendre has taken the bad news well. For Angela James, it's another story. When you've been in the program for that long, and um, really for the first five or six years, she was a real strong force that, I mean, no matter how clear you try to make the messages and how much you try to help them, I think it's denial. And, uh, you know, she didn't take it well, and I didn't expect her to take it well. And, uh, she's feeling a lot of pain right now. And she's certainly not very happy with me. The player appeals to the Canadian Hockey Association for a review of her dismissal. The coach's decision is upheld. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Here's the first ever Canadian Olympic women's hockey team. The task now is to put the anxiety of the cuts behind them and move on. Lake Placid, New York, home of the American Olympic Training Center, home ice for the American team. Tomorrow, Team Canada will meet them again in the final of the Three Nations Cup. Yeah. In a fighting mood today, Vic. There you go. In a winning mood. Where's the coach's room? <laughs> right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean we don't have one? Ah! so far seems to have a little bit more jump in its forecheck than Canada. They may have led Finland and America in the round robin, but the Canadian team seems ragged and listless. Okay, nice drum, now's the time, hey, now's the time, let's go. For the players and their families, it's a nasty wake-up call on the eve of the Olympics. Are you guys with me or not? You want to be serious about winning this hockey game? Let's go. Hefford, Whip, Goyette. I want to go. Let's go, go girls. They're not going to let this happen now. But they are tired. You know, they are tired. This 3-0 shutout is the most humiliating loss in Team Canada's history. The first time they have had to settle for silver. We beat ourselves, and I really do believe that. Tonight we beat ourselves. I talked about the lack of preparation, and I said, if each one of you looks in the mirror, you won't be able to say to yourself, I did everything I could have to get ready for this hockey game. I talked about lack of respect for the opponent, lack of preparation. Yeah. And I also talked to them about what they need to be doing over Christmas to get ready for January when we come back together, and it's not partying, I'll tell you that. They can take that pain home with them of standing on the blue line listening to the USA anthem. They can take that home with them for Christmas, because sometimes that's what it takes. The U.S. has felt that pain for years and years and years, and that's why they have that intense hunger, and we need it. A difficult game for Canada, but the games that matter most lie ahead.